Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you to this online video series on group theory. I am Dr. Samina Boxpalakai. I am Vice Principal and Head of the Mathematics Department in Narosji Vadia College and I will be delivering lectures on group theory which is paper 4 for you all. So it is the third semester. So I will be giving lectures on MT334 that is group theory. Now for group theory a very strong base of your first year algebra is required and therefore I prefer to spend some time on going over the preliminaries which is kind of a prerequisite for this course. So uh, everything that you have learned in the first year class whatever is required for this algebra class in a nutshell I will try to give you all this and because this is a preliminaries chapter I have called it as chapter 0. So we will actually begin our lectures with chapter 0 that is preliminaries and for those of you who are very sure that their FI basics are clear and they still remember them you all can skip this chapter completely and go directly to chapter 1. For those of you who are not very sure or who cannot recollect completely whatever you have studied in the first year, then it is advisable to spend some time going over the lectures in this chapter 2. And uh, what I like to do is in a typical classroom setting, I like to ask a lot of questions because then that tells me whether my students have understood or no. Now here of course it's not a live interaction that we are having. So instead what I have done is in most of my videos I have put pause points. So initially I will remind you all about it because you all are going to watch a video at your end. Remember you have the pause button in your hand. So when I ask a question I prefer to pause for a few seconds because you could actually pause your video. You could try to answer the question or at least think about it and then get back to the video and in most cases you will find the answer in the uh, very next part of the video. So before I begin I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Board of Studies in Mathematics for having given me this opportunity to deliver these lectures. Well, I must tell you that group theory is a subject which is very close to my heart and I enjoy teaching it. By the way, I've been teaching for almost 29 years now. So without further ado, let's start with the chapter on preliminaries. And in the very first article, it's always a good idea to set up a notations so that when I use a particular symbol, there is no doubt in your mind as to what exactly I mean by that. So in our first article in the preliminaries chapter, we will start with notations. In mathematics, for these sets of numbers, we use what are called as script letters. So we begin with script N, which will stand for set of natural numbers. It's not a very difficult symbol to master. You use a capital N with a parallel extra line over here. So that will denote the set of natural numbers. The natural numbers are your counting numbers. So here we have numbers like 1, 2, 3 and so on. So N stands for the set of natural numbers or the counting numbers. We then come to the set of integers. And in the set of integers, we have all our natural numbers. Along with that, we have 0 and we have the negative integers too. So our set of integers looks somewhat like this. As I said, we have the negative integers 0 as well as the positive integers. Now remember 0 is neither positive nor negative. We'll come back to this later. Q is the set of rational numbers. And rational numbers 
are numbers of the form p upon q where p and q are both integers the denominator is never equal to 0 and we all agree to write a fraction in the simplest possible form that means other than 1 there should be no common factor between the numerator and the denominator in other words the gcd of p and q has to be equal to 1 okay so a set of rationals will contain all such fractions next we come to the set of real numbers we all know that there are certain numbers which are not rational like root of 2 root of 3 root of 5 pi e for that matter so all these numbers are called as irrational numbers uh, both rationals as well as the irrationals when we put them together we get what is called as the set of real numbers and the set of real numbers is denoted by script r and finally we have the set of complex numbers and complex numbers can be written as numbers of the form x plus i y where x and y are called the real and imaginary parts respectively but they are both real numbers and i square is equal to minus 1 so these are sets that we will be coming across very often in group theory so it's better that you all know a notation for this in addition to these there are a few other notations that you must know for example if i write z with a superscript plus so if i write z with a superscript plus this will denote the set of positive integers so z plus will denote set of positive integers and notice that if I actually write out the set of positive integers then it will be just 1, 2, 3 and so on so z plus is actually the set of natural numbers so when I talk about set of positive integers it is nothing but the set of natural numbers on the other hand uh, if I say set of non-negative integers look at the set of non-negative integers now the only elements that you have to avoid in this set are the integers which are not which are not negative so you will have to rather you will have to avoid the integers which are negative so in, from this set I'll have to leave out minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 remember 0 is not negative so if I actually write out these elements let me put that here so if I write set of non-negative integers If I write set of non-negative integers, then I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So this set is now set of natural numbers and in addition to that we also have 0. So there is a big difference between saying set of positive integers and set of non-negative integers. Set of positive integers is just the, your usual set of natural numbers whereas set of non-negative integers will be the set of natural numbers along with 0. Just like that we can also define we can also define Q plus so this will denote the set of positive rationals we can have r plus this will be the set of positive real numbers uh, however don't make the mistake of writing c plus 
So this plus symbol, when it is used as a superscript, it means that from that set, you simply take all the positive elements. There is another notation that will be very useful to us. And that is Z star. So when I use a superscript star, this will denote the non-zero elements from this set. So if it is Z star, this will be set of non-zero integers. So other than zero, you put all your remaining integers over here. So we will have all the positive integers as well as the negative integers. Just like that, we can also define Q star. Then it will be the set of non-zero rational numbers. You can have R star. R star will be the set of non-zero real numbers. And C star will be the set of non-zero complex numbers. Okay. So that's as far as the notations are concerned. Next I would like to talk about a very important principle. It's very easy to understand. Uh, however, it has vast applications. It will be used very often in algebra. So make sure that you are aware of the well-ordering principle. As I said, it is not a very difficult result to comprehend. But it has tremendous power. So we look at the well-ordering principle. In short, we also call it as WOP. Well, this states that every non-empty subset of non-negative integers has the least element That is, if I have a set which satisfies two conditions, it should not be empty and it should be a subset of non-negative integers. That means in this set, you can have natural numbers, you can have zero, but you should not have the negative integers. So if this happens, then we can be sure that there will be an element, say D, in the set which happens to be the smallest element in this set. That means D will be less than or equal to X for every element in S. So, uh, for example, if I take my set to contain 1, 2, 3, 4, then this set is not empty. This set does not contain any negative integer. So, uh, by the well-ordering principle, it must have the least element. And here, as you can see, the least element is 1. We will discuss some more aspects of the well-ordering principle in our next lecture. Thank you.